Success is not a destination. Success is a journey. This message is brought to you from the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Lily of the Valley Parish. God bless you as you listen. Actually, today is Translation Part 3. And they we're going to, I'm going to exhort you, and then we pray. Amen? We'll take our text from the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2. I read from the KJV translation. Romans 12, 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind, that you may prove what is that good, an acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. Romans 12, 2 from NIV translation says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you will be able to test, to approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Amen. From New Living Translation is rendered this way. Do not copy the behavior and custom of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. If you have that translation, underline the way you think. The way you think affects you so much. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. Amen? Repeat after me. Say, God's will for me is a good will, is a pleasing will, and it's perfect. So help me, God. <clears throat> yes. The scripture is telling us <clears throat> that we should not be conformed to this world. Rather, we should be transformed by the renewal of our mind. It's very important that you do not remain in the same position. You do not remain in the same spiritual state. You should grow after you experience in giving your life to God. The spirit of God comes into your life, into your spirit. And quickens your spirit with what we call the zoe, God's kind of life, and gives you a new life. That is your spirit, but your mind, your mind, your mind has to go through the same process to renew all of your mind with the word of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. He says, when you renew your mind and you're transformed, it is then you begin to test. It is then you begin to approve. It is then you begin to tell of God's will for your life. And that will is a pleasing will, is a good will, is a perfect will. Amen? You cannot, you cannot understand the perfect will of God for your life until your mind becomes renewed. There is no shortcut. You can elongate it, but there's no shortcut. Are you with me? You must spend time. You see, like I told the people during the first service, I will go to sound like a broken record. And I said, many of you don't have a picture of a broken record. You are born in this digital age. You have your iPod, your iPad, your MP3, you listen to through your micro, micro, micro cards, through your flash. So you don't even understand what <clears throat> a broken record is. We understand, those of us of our age, know what a gramophone, gramophone is. Your father will buy one big equipment, a musical box with a, with a, with a, that box is placed in front of your parlor. You know, you dare not touch it. They will come and whine it and whine it. Of your life, you don't know what it means. Whine, unless you go to a museum. Whine, musical museum. Whine it, whine it, and they put that pin and put it on top of the plate. The plate will sing, sing, sing. When it gets to a level where it's cracked, it will be repeating itself. You know? And then after that, they to the smaller turntables. But now, unless you go to disco houses where they see use it, are you? To display whatever display, you won't understand what a broken record is. Broken record repeats, 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 repeats. When it cracks, you buy a new one because it will keep on repeating. So I say, I may be sounding like a broken record by repeating, repeating, repeating. Oh, yes. One of my mentors, my Mudok, says, when you, when you get tired of hearing a particular thing, it is sinking. When you get tired of hearing me, transformation passes, always talking about transformation, it's getting into your system and it gets into your system, then you begin to. It begins to open you up, gives you revelation, gives you understanding of God's will for your life. And you need to know that God's will for your life is pleasing. It's the best thing that can happen to you. The job you are doing may not be the God's will for your life. The job may not be in Shell or anywhere. 
No, the, I mean the perfect will. But if you're there and you're sure that God placed you there, He directed you to there, is a will for you, you prosper. That's why many of us are playing games with our life. We are playing games with our marriage. We are playing games with our future. We are playing games. Serious game, gambling. Is it this? If it's not this, is this? I have four options. Playing games. And the Bible has a journey today that you should not conform to the world. The world has a pattern. Don't think that it is. The world has a pattern. Who has a pattern? The way it behaves. And they control you from that. Look at the fashion we are wearing. Now, this thing has come back. This is the suspender. And I promised myself I will not wear it. I wore it three times in my life. When I was in the bank, I wore it. You know, that time you just, I said, I'm not going to wear them. I don't tire. Let them continue. I said, I won't wear it. I told my friends, I'm not going to wear them. Nothing wrong, but I said, what is it now? We want it to go back. When we are walking in the bank, when we are walking, we are eating. It's coming back again to meet me. No, let them continue. Let me dress up the way I want to dress up. Praise the name of the Lord. So these things are being controlled. The world has a pattern. But the Bible says you should not, you should not follow after the pattern of this world, but tr transform by renewing your mind. Renewal of mind is one of the greatest power on earth. When your mind is renewed, you know what God has called you to do, my brother, my sister. Oh, yes. You will know what you are meant to be doing. Or you will know your will, the will of God for your marriage, for your life, for your career, where you live, the things you do. You will know. And it comes by you spending time with the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. That is no shortcut. Today I will sound like a broken record. So make sure that it gets into your system that it's no shortcut. What did I say? No shortcut. You must interact with the word of God. You must engage the word in your mind. And let it be renewed. All the ideas you got while we are growing. All the minds, stories, has to go through the, the, the process of renewal, it will go, the word of God will take place. It will leave you, the word of God will replace. The principles of the word of God. Some of us, we are born in an environment where things, we are always, we always, we will lack things. So we grew from an environment to hold on to things. Hey, supposing I don't make it, supposing I don't make it, supposing... Reminds you of the poverty you came from. Suppose, suppose, so because of that, you hold on to money. True or false? Suppose you hold on to money. But the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. So the mind of God is different from the mind you acquire from your, from your environment. So you need to go back, study the word of God on money handling, finances, wealth generation. By the time you renew that, you renew that, you begin to apply it. God's principle will begin to produce. Are you with me? Huh? 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 Begin to produce for you. They will call you foolish. You are giving your money away. Foolish man. Foolish woman. But you are praying in the principle of the word of God. You are praying in the principle. And God is the one that will produce for you. Then you begin to prove. You begin to attest the will of God for your life. The word will tell you, ah, before you get married, make sure you're pregnant. For the man, ah, the woman must be pregnant, and how do I know? That's what the word will tell you. Hey, you're foolish, how do you know that? This? Who are you? Are you God? Do you know the will of God? Love has a beginning, love has an end. You're only looking at the beginning. Do you know what's happening in the end? It's when you engage the scripture. And hold on to it. It will be tested. Your friends will call you foolish. The situation will call you foolish. It will be tested. When you hold on to it. The word of God doesn't need anybody to defend it. It's in the book of Hebrews, I think. It 
you prove? Why you're holding on to? It's going through your mind because you're meditating on it. There's no way it can get you without getting to your mind, to your spirit. You begin to meditate it, meditate it. It consumes you. You could imagine it. Because it is part of you. You begin to pray it because it's part of you. There's no other formula I have for you in this church than letting you know you must be a student of the word of God. This Bible must live the pages of this and jump into your spirit. Scriptures here. I go to hospitals. You know this white Gideon's Bible, right? Eh? When they give birth to babies, I don't know what they do. They just open the, they raise the, they will raise the pillow and put this under, and the baby will be lying. No problem. If that scripture from those white Bible, Gideon Bible, if it doesn't leave the pages of the paper into your heart, from your heart into your mouth, it will be powerless. When there is sickness, <laughs> Bible won't do anything for you. It must leave. Bible says, lay hands on the sick and they recover. It must leave the pages of the papers, go into your mind and your spirit, and comes out empowered. So this is the word of God, but it is useless if you don't read it and enter and let it renew your mind. You go to homes, you have beautiful Bibles decorated. Bible decorated cannot help you. You must use the Bible, and that's why I tell people, some people have Bibles, they never interact with the Bible. It's not even marked. Are you worshipping the Bible? Are you? Mark the Bible, interact with it, read it, use it. After one year, buy another one and keep the other one for reference. Use it, it's meant to be used. These days, we have digital Bibles. Uh -huh. That's an improvement. Use that one now. Talking Bible, use it. My iPad has a Bible I can mark. Mark it. Electronic market, you can mark it. You highlight it. Every morning as I'm walking around to the way I live, I put on my, this, my iPhone and the scriptures. And I read the book of Mark. Book of Mark. I go back and read again. That is the way you can bombard your mind with the scriptures. With the scriptures. It says then you approve. You will test. You must, you must approve it through practical or through results. Testimonies that will come into your life because you've done that. Say, do not conform. That means if you are quiet, you will conform. If you don't say anything, you will conform. Pressures around you will suck you into the system. But what do you do? Be transformed by renewal of your mind. The renewal of your mind is a process. A process. The Bible says, let's read it before you think I am talking from my head. Because some of you may not open the Bible. Psalm 119, verse 103. Psalm 119, verse 103 to 106. It says, how sweet are thy words unto my tests. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precept I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path is a powerful revelation. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In those days, I play, I think it's praise night, praise night, we see something. Praise one of these Maranatha praise. I pray it over and over and over to be singing. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Your word is a light unto my feet. You walk with your feet. You advance to where you're going with your feet. But the Lord of God will be a light. To be a light unto your feet. To be a light. 
So if you don't engage yourself in the word of God, you cannot get that light. You'll be grooming in darkness. And some of us, even though we have eyes popped up open, looking at things, but we are in darkness. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Huh? Talk to me. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes. You're in darkness of who to marry. You're in darkness. A quick job to take. They're all looking at your face. Triple have come to marry you. You're in darkness. Your word is a light unto my feet and a light unto my path. If I were you, you're in that position. Look for scripture. Don't hurry. Pick scriptures that address these areas and begin to think about it, pray about it. Are you with me? No hurry, no rush. The woman, the man is not running away. Take time to meditate on the scripture. Take time to meditate on scripture, on guidance. Ask God questions. The word of God is filled with answers, with promises. Think about it, pray about it, pray about it. God will begin to download instructions based on the scripture. And with that, no, with that you will be away. At a particular point, if you're sensitive, you will be aware of what to do. It can come direct. It can come as you are watching Christian television. It can come as you are listening to people. Are you with me? It can even come as you are discussing with the person. The answer will come, yes or no. Something will be exposed to you. Praise the name of the Lord. I told people, because I'm going to repeat here. I don't know why I'm saying that. A bit of how I discovered my wife. Let me just, a bit of it. It may speak to some people. It may not, but what I did, as a young man looking for who to marry, gotten a job, I feel to this time I have to marry. In the church I worship every Sunday after Sunday. You know, I will just stay watching. As the people are going, the ladies, I say, hi, my wife is in this place. Between me, I said, my wife is in this place. I'll just be talking, but I was dark. I said, my wife is in this place. And I will pray, Lord, I want to get married. When they do testimony night, like the one they're going to do today, right? I was an active young man. I will join them, and I will listen to every testimony. This is my own practical experience, so I don't know. It may help you. But I will listen to every testimony. And then, you know, I will listen to people, how people God led people. I say, eh, is that how God leads? How can he lead me? You know, I'll pick every whatever, whatever, and I'll pray. And God gave me a formula, me, yo. It may help you or not help you. In my interaction as a young man, because I did not fold my hand and say, hey, hey, who will I marry? I was an active young man, getting involved in church work, doing what we were doing. I was a counselor. I mean, counseling the young believers. If, in my activity, I run into Sister Ngozi, we interact. And I like her. I like the way, I like her teeth, the way she talks. I said, Lord, can it be this one? I'll write it in my small part. I won't talk to her. I won't harass her. I will pray. Father, within me, I like this one, but tell me, what do I? As I do it, within me, as I do it, something will come up. Right? The Sangozi will manifest one day. Without knowing, he says, see, not your wife. Thank you, Lord. I'll cancel. This is me. In, it's not that I'm looking. You know, in my interaction, okay, Sister Bosse. You know, my Lord, is it Sister Bosse? I'm not sure. Okay. I'll pray, and I'll pray, and I'll pray. God will show me the side of Sister Bosse. Not this one. I'll cancel. I was doing that. I showed my wife the list. Then we'll go, where am I married? She saw it. Now she saw it. Even her name is the last step. In my interaction, before, hey, is that Sister Dukwe or Salami, whatever? I'll write. I'll do it till she, she'll, her name popped up. And I was praying. And as I was praying, I was getting more and more eh, attracted. I was, I was praying. As I was praying, when it dawned on me that this may be the one, and I talked to the elders around me. It's okay, don't worry, investigate for me. Investigated, investigated. Also, I'm sure the accent also investigated, and it's okay, you can move forward. But 
I moved forward. The long story, you know, I was able to do what I did, and I got married to her. But I was exposing it to the word of God. Your word is a light unto my feet and a light unto my path. I was. When I had to leave my work to go for missionary work, it was tight. My wife was working as a insurance practitioner. I was working as a banker. And that time, there was shaking in the industry. People were being retrenched. But my mission was asking me to go to a missionary. So I wasn't sure. But I knew that something in me will have to be involved in church work. I knew because I knew, I knew. So I was, oh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Destiny, destiny decisions. Are you with me? Huh? I prayed. Anybody I go to, because see, he's the one leading me. They give me an answer, but it is not, you know, now you're the one God will speak to family. But God will use other people to confirm it. So I started praying. I brought that scriptures. Are you with me? Are you with me? I brought that scriptures on guidance, on God's leading. As men are led by the word of God, they are the blah, 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 blah. I got all the scriptures. I will pray, I will pray, I will pray in tongues for hours. I will pray in tongues, you know. Depending on God, God lead me. I don't want to make mistake. I've just married. I don't want to make mistake. What do I do? One day, I met a friend of mine. We were jesting. He said, ah, church, I love that you're going to say, I love that your, your mission wants to tell you something. I said, yes. So what do I do? He said, ah, ah. Then I talk to your MD. He'll be faithful. That go, and go, that go and talk to your MD came as a revelation. Boom. Are you with me? He entered my head, my mind. As I think about it, I had strength. I had boldness that evening. I cornered my MD. And sat my MD down. And I speak to, I speak, to, spoke to him. Ah, George, you know, you know, you're very valuable to us. Valuable because I, I am a church man. I, would, I don't chop their money. <laughs> you're very valuable to no, 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 no. That time, that time they have sacked people and promoted me. That's, they have retrenched stuff. You know, you're very valuable to Okay, we know what to do. Do you have a community leave? Do you have community leave? I say yes. So you can find out, can find out. Who can replace you? Who can take your position till you come back? Okay, he says, it's okay, right. I can even extend it, right? No problem. I say, eh? So you can write. Right? Next thing. Right that you're going for. I'll, I'll extend, I'll extend the leave for you. No problem. No do, no do. The same evening, the board had a meeting. I was discussed there. One of the board, one of the directors, come, 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 George. Pastor George, sit down. I learned that your church is sending you to, for training. <laughs> You know, this unbeliever for training abroad. No, no, okay, okay, okay. You can go, you can go. We'll handle it. You come back, you come back to us. Eh? I say, yes, sir. You come back, I say, yes. Three times, come back, I say, yes, sir. I left. I was earning my salary during my mission field abroad. My wife was collecting my salary. And I went, I came back, and I picked my job back until I was able to, you know, leave, leave the winner. It happened to me looking at you. Because. Your word is a light unto my feet and the light unto my path. I was praying scripture. I was waiting on God. My eyes were stretched. I was listening. My mind was alert. Listening to whatever God can speak to me. And people have said a lot of things, but I was sensitive. And he led me, and I went and came back. He can lead you in Jesus' name. He said, when you renew your mind, then you will prove, you will test the path of the will of God. In business, he can lead you. Somebody can come with proposals, beautiful proposals. Have you allowed the word of God to lead your feet? To be your feet, your light? You jump at it. A brother will come with long neck, fine, you know, everything perfect. Hmm? With the Moblong pen, you know, everything is in perfect. And you, that's the type you want. He has, he has cars. He has come with provision. He didn't come with vision. You jump at provision, boom, you're fighting. He has no vision. You or two, you have no vision. You're living your life 
for that man to be your perfect, to, for that man to fulfill you. Every time you're, 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 you're clobbering a man like crab, complaining. Why are you complaining? You didn't ask God. Are you with me? Other areas, your children, where you live, the kind of business to do. God says, I know the plans I have towards you. I rather know the thought, which is also planned towards you. Thought of good and not evil to take you to your expected end. Have you considered that? That somebody, only one person has said that. Your bank manager has not promised you that. Your father has not promised you that. God promised you that you will take you to your expected end. Whoever has promised you that? Only God. So what do you do with that promise? You toy with it. You play with it. One person has promised that. God, through his word, I know the thought I have towards you. Your MD can change his mind, Abby. He said, thought of good and not evil. To take you to your expected end. You have not been there, but he says that end will be good for you. And what are you doing? The Bible says, renew your mind with the word of God so that you will understand, so that you can prove the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for your life. We come to church, we're lazy. We never use the Bible, we never use the word of God. To God, God our life. We use every other experience. Mrs. B has done this. Mr. B has done this. He didn't work for this. This therefore, you include yourself in the therefore. I stand here to charge you. You are not that part of the therefore. Your case is different. Amen? Amen. Always claim that my case is different. It has not happened for B, C, D, but my case is different. You are unique. I preach a message here. I'm not ordinary. Abby, look at me. I'm not uh, ordinary. What it means so during this season of transformation, which is supposed to be all season anyway, you must make time, don't run around too much, engage in the word of God, engage prayer to God, use His word, meditate on His word, allow it direct you, allow it be your light on your feet. You don't take a step without hearing God. Hearing God, I don't mean that He will call you George. You know how to hear God when you read the word of God, He speaks to you. Through many of various ways, through inward witness, through the Bible, whatever. But let God guide you. Let God guide you. Christians are, 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 are doing hit and miss. It's not supposed to be so. You are in business, you allow your counselors to be all other unbelieving friends. I'm not saying you can't tap on somebody's experience, but you know eh, when to take a step of faith. God has to be your chief executive. Your senior partner. Read wide, get the exposure, but remember, life is spiritual. You can't come to church every day with your Bible. You go not expressing anything. Your life is monotonous, nothing exciting, nothing revealing, nothing. It's just like that. Just because you are there with your, a particular prayer request that is consuming you. Lord, I want a husband or not. Today, today, today. Lord, I want this job. Today, today, today. And God is saying, relax. Your life goes beyond that husband. Know me. Know my ways. I will take you through this exciting life. Even when temptation comes, it's not the end. The Bible says, there's no temptation that overcome you that is not common. He says he will with, he, God is a wonderful God. He uses everything that faces you as a child of God. He says he will with the temptation make a way of escape. Who can say that? Only God. The temptation you are facing through. He said, God, he said, yes. There's no temptation that will overcome you that is not international. Meaning, everyone experiences it. You're not the only one. But he says, hold on, child of God. He said, will with. I'm going to use that temptation to do what? If you, yes, make a way. Make a way. Praise the name of the Lord. But you can only flow if your mind is renewed. And it flow until you trash that whatever and replace the word of God. That's why they do this on you today to go home. That's why I'm still sound like a broken record. I've not told you anything new other than repeating and allowing the Holy Spirit to uh, empower it and, and, and make it viral, in quote, in your heart. You know when something is viral, Abby? 
The digital website is viral. It's gone viral. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Blow it open in your system that you can't rest until you do that. What are the things you should do that go back and make sure? Study the word of God and meditate on the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Meditate. There are so many ways you can do that. Meditate on the word of God. You can't say, Pastor, I can't read the Bible. You are telling lies. There's Bible in voice. There's voice Bible. There's Bible everywhere. You, you have no choice. As you're walking, you can be listening to the word of God. When you settle down, then you can read it. You can be listening and reading at the same time. Abby, you can do that. You can decide to read the Bible in a New Testament in, in, in a week by using a voice Bible. You put it in your ear. Over and over, sometimes you may not listen consciously, but something is getting a change. The Bible says, word of God is what? Spirit and life. No, not so. Eh? As you're reading, as you're listening, something is exchanging. By the time you're conscious, you sit down, listen more. But why, but why you expose your mind to the scripture? It's very powerful. I've seen cases of people in the hospital who were in coma, 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 their eyes could not function, their ears could not function physically, but their spirit was alive because they are not yet dead. But as they play scriptures to them, one day they open their mind out. Pum, pum. What happened? There was interaction between their spirit and the word of God. I seen children, they were deformed and they exposed them to scriptures over and over. By the time they turned, the child don't stretch his leg and held the cord. That's why I encourage people in hospitals, when you have sick people, don't go there and depress them. The, if the hospital allows you, place the word of God or songs to them. Not to go there, oh God, oh, you meet somebody, you're crying, you're sick. You better get out of that place because you're creating depression. So playing good songs, playing you know, inspiring songs, playing the scriptures to them, to help them. But sometimes they are calm, they will listen to one or two phrases. Are you with me? Be not conformed to the world, be transformed by renewal of your mind. It's a powerful process. Powerful process. They can teach you anything. If they don't teach you this one, they're not, they're not allowing you. They, will, they don't want you to grow. Powerful process. Anyone here can do it. Can I see your phone? You have this phone. This phone has a media, B. You see? I know all of you have far powerful phones. God has blessed Nigerians. So somebody came from London. America, please, and saw Nigerians with phone. He has been living in London for America for 20 years. He said, Chey! Nigerians can have good phones. I visit friends in America. I teach them how to use iPhone. They live there. I live here. They use the one old. God has blessed you with this. God, Abby, put the scripture there. Put this thing and, and be listening. Or use the wireless one. Or blue. Listing. My brother, listing. When you're walking from here to that, your friend, listing. When you get there, you can switch off. When you're coming back, listing. After service, listing. To the scripture, listening to today's message, listening to other messages, listing. That your ear is a gate to your heart. Listen. Say, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows what? Issues of life. Guard your heart. Stop listening to, 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 to the news from CNN that depresses you. Hey, listen, Channel 10. Poo. I'm not against Channel 10. This is all the whole thing Boko Haram is doing. Oh, this country. Because of that, you can't even take decisions. You can't plan your business again because of Boko Haram. No, seriously, because of Ebola. You can't plan your. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. The planning. Let us, you know, let us hook ourselves to the power of transformation. It comes by renewing your mind. You're ready. If you don't do it, you can't. They can pray for you every way. Yes, prayer is good. You receive the power of God, fine, but you'll be a baby. Push you down, you wake up again, they push you again, you wake up again, you get the healing, you give testimony. Praise God, things are happening in your life. After the whole thing, you will become a baby. And that's why churches are filled with babies. Babies pulling on the pastor. Pulling on. Babies. They can't stand and take decisions. And for you to take this decision, you must renew your mind. Something you must come up and pursue God. And it's when you put the scriptures in your heart. Nobody can do that for you. My job is to encourage you. If you have any questions, you come to me. 
but you must be doing that yourself. Nobody can renew your own mind for you. It's to teach you the scripture. I will tell you, speak to you, encourage you, but you have to sit down, make one hour a day or 30 minutes every day to do that. Do you know also, let me tell you something, that devotion is slightly different from Bible reading. Let me explain. Bible study. Devotion, you pick new, open heaven. You start with the family every day, right? Pick it, 30 minutes, everybody does scatter. I mean, go to where they're going. That's good. You pray, that's good. But in Bible study, listen to me. Bible study, may not do Bible study every day. You choose a time looking at your diary or your calendar. You sit down alone. What did I say? Alone. What did I say? Alone. alone. With your pen and paper or with your iPad, writing material. You sit down. You know what I can do it for you? You open the Bible. You decide how you want to study it. I do study topically. I want to study faith, godliness, holiness, anger, all those things you know. The Holy Spirit will lead you. You study them, present them, and write notes. And then read other references that I write notes. And as you're doing that, you're meditating on that you over and over. Just study. Or you, any, any pattern you want to, but you sit down and you study. And as you do it, God will show you patterns. He will show you things about life that deeper than you are seeing. But you, everyone must be engaged in Bible study. And then you pray. Even your prayer will be, will be richer because you pray the scripture. Prayer gives you strategy. Then you know how to step out. And you mature. So that, that process of you must get into, get into. He says, don't be foolish. Understanding the will of God. You must understand it. And it's for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us pray. I believe you've been blessed today. And I thank God for your decision to listen to this telecast. And I want to give you the opportunity to invite Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior. So if you are ready, you pray along with me now. Heavenly Father, I thank you today for giving your son Jesus to die for me. And today, I invite you into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. I renounce every relationship I have with the devil. And I declare it's not void. And I declare that Jesus died for me. He was buried and he rose again on the third day. For me, he shed his blood. And I invite him into my life to be my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. My brother, I thank you for your decision. It's a wonderful, wise decision. And I know that you will be blessed by that decision. I'm encouraging you, if you need somebody to talk to, you're lonely, you need somebody to talk to, somebody to counsel you on issues of life using the scripture. Our telephone line is on the screen. They can also pray with you and speak to you. Also, our address, email address, church address, and phone number is on the screen. And I thank God as you do this, and I believe that God will show you signs and wonders. Thank you, Lord, and God bless you. We know that you have really blessed by this message. You can visit RCCG Lily of Valley Word and Sound Desk at 31 or Latunde Onimola Street off Bab and Road, Sorilere, Lagos. God bless you.